Lesson 11, addition of fractions and inscribed angles. First of all, addition of fractions. We know that when we're adding fractions, we have to have a common denominator. We keep the denominator and we add the numerators. What we're going to be doing is addition of fractions, um, and we're going to be using variable terms instead of numerical terms. Keep in mind the denominator numerator rule. All right, this is very familiar to all of us. Um, we use this when finding equivalent fractions, right, but it's the denominator numerator rule, which says that the denominator and numerator can be multiplied by the same number without changing the value of the fraction. Okay, so the denominator and numerator can be multiplied by the same number without changing the value of the fraction. Alright, for this 
one we have m over k minus b force over 1 plus dx over a k squared. Go ahead and try that one on your own. We're going to check it in class. Keep in mind finding the common denominator and then getting your new numerators. If you need to, go ahead and pause the video before going on to the next part. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about is inscribed angles. All right, what is an inscribed angle? It's an angle whose sides are on the inside of the circle and whose vertex is on the circle. Right? It's an angle whose sides are inside the circle That's where we get inscribed, it's written inside, and whose vertex is on the circle. All right, you'll see an example of this in the diagram below. This is the inscribed angle, all right? The sides of it are inside the circle, and the vertex is on the point on the outside. Now, how do we find measurements? of the different arcs and angles of the circle. The measure of any inscribed angle equals half the measure of the intercepted arc. Right, the measure of any inscribed angle equals half the measure of the intercepted arc. For example, this angle intercepts this arc on the outside of the circle. Okay, it opens up to this arc. This is where the ends of the angle are. It opens up to this arc here. This angle is half of the arc. So in order to find the arc, we would have to take our angle times 2, which means that this arc is 80 degrees. All right? The angle is half of the arc. Or we could state it otherwise, the arc is double the angle. We're going to use this information to solve for x. In this particular circle, we know that total circles equal 360 degrees. So we can add all of the arcs on the outside of our circle to solve for x. We can only do that if we know the measure of the intercepted arc, which we found from the inscribed angle. So then we can add 5x plus 80 plus 7x plus 40, and it should equal 360 degrees. Right? If we combine like terms, 5x and 7x is 12x. 80 and 40 is 120. We can subtract 360 from both sides. We get 12x is equal to 240. We divide by 12, that means x equals 20. And from there, we can even go on and find the measure of the different arcs. The thing you need to keep in mind is knowing that the arc is 2 times the angle, and the angle is half of the arc. Using that information, I want you to go ahead and take this example. I've drawn a circle. These are the measurements of this circle. All right, we have this arc, which is 4x plus 20 degrees. We have this arc out here, which is 5x plus 80 degrees. And we have this angle, which is 40 degrees. You're going to use this information to solve for x. So go ahead and take a minute, jot down the example in your notes, solve it, and we will come back and check it. 